chapter 8, video 1, we are going to be discussing a new idea this semester called confidence intervals. And in this chapter specifically, we're just going to be doing confidence intervals for proportions. In chapter 10, we will come back and revisit confidence intervals, but we will then focus on mean problems. Now, if I could show you a little short video clip of The Price is Right. I would show it to you, but I'm afraid YouTube is going to flag it as being copyright infringement. And so I'm just going to have to describe to you what's going to happen here. So imagine you're on The Price is Right, and you are going to bid on a jet ski. And you got to figure out how much is this brand new sea do jet ski. So how much do you think that jet ski costs? Do you have any idea? Any ballpark? I mean, without even looking anything up, do you have any rough idea how much a jet ski costs? Brand new? Because I don't. And maybe you do, but I don't. I have no idea. I'd have to do a little bit of research to maybe come up with how much a jet ski costs. Now, depending on your prior knowledge of maybe how much jet skis cost, how confident do you think your guess is correct? So I have no idea. I mean, I would guess, I don't know, maybe three grand for a jet ski. How confident would I be in my $3,000 guess? Really not that confident. I'd have low confidence that I was really correct here because I honestly have no clue. Now on the Price is Right, there is a game called the range game. And in the range game, as you can see in this picture, and again, I would show you the video clip here, but I am afraid YouTube would flag it for copyright infringement, so I will just describe to you what's happening in the range game. So somewhere in this black strip uh, is hidden the actual secret price of the jet ski. And there is this red rectangle down here at the bottom, and it's going to slowly start moving up. And the contestant has to hit the red button here whenever he believes that the true price of the jet ski falls somewhere within this red rectangle. Okay? So all he has to do is get the actual price anywhere in between the top of the red rectangle and the bottom. Anywhere in between. I mean, it could be right in the middle. It could be, you know, right on the edge as long as it is somewhere in between. So how would you decide when to stop the game? And I would think the best strategy for the range game would be I would get my idea of what I think is the, the actual price of the jet ski, and I would stop that red rectangle, which has a $150 range from the bottom of it to the top of it. I would put my best guess really right in the middle so that I would kind of be right in the middle of either side. Uh, I still have a little bit of room above that number, and I'd have a little bit of room below that number. That is my best guess that I have in mind. Now, here's a close-up of where the contestant stopped uh, his rectangle for the range game. So based on where he stopped here, what was his best guess for the jet ski? And again, I would say it's, it's, he probably thought it was going to be somewhere in the middle here, right? So let's kind of estimate what these values are. And, you know, where is the middle exactly? So we can see it looks like this bottom number, uh, what is it? That'd be 10,675, just about maybe, maybe 74, but we'll go with a nice 75 there. And it looks like the top number would be 10825 So where is right in the middle? And you can see there's $150 between that upper and that lower value there. Um, so basically, if we were to add on another $75 or subtract $75 from either one of our two ends here, basically right in the middle would be right here. His best guess, if we, if we were to shoot right in the middle here, his best guess would be $10,750. That was his best guess for how much the jet ski cost. And look, I, I thought like three grand. I have literally no idea how much jet skis are. I mean, t over 10 grand, that's a lot of money just for a, a car that can only drive on water. I mean, you could do a lot of money with $10,750. 
So that's his best guess, $10,750. Now that number that he came up with, that best guess, statistically, we would call that middle value the point estimate. Now the point estimate in this game was just based on an educated guess right? That $10,750. But in statistics, we're not just going to give a educated guess. We're going to use a random sample for our guess. And we will use the result of our random sample. And again, specifically this chapter, we are working with proportions. So we're going to take a random sample. We are going to calculate a sample proportion. And that will be kind of our starting point for our uh, range of values, if you will. Now, once we get that best guess or that point estimate, we will need to deviate. This is where maybe some measure of spread is going to come into play now. So that point estimate is kind of like our center. We need a spread to go along with that. But we need to deviate an equal amount from our guess to create the range of values to hopefully capture the true uh, cost of the jet ski. Now, that equal amount that we deviate from above and below the point estimate is called the margin of error. And I'm sure you've heard of the term margin of error used before. And typically you hear it uh, in terms of like polling, like a poll was taken and, you know, um, it was found that 57% of people would vote for candidate A with a margin of error of plus or minus 3%. So margin of error is just, it's kind of like your wiggle room. It's, it's how much sampling variability that you're allowed to kind of play around with. And the margin of error can change kind of from problem to problem. And we'll talk about how we can uh, increase or decrease the margin of error as well throughout this chapter. Now, the point estimate, again, this is the $10,750. And the margin of error, I already kind of shared with you what that margin of error would be because that upper range value was $10,800. $25 and that lower range value was 10,000, uh, what was it, 675. And so to be able to get from 10,750 down to 10,675, we would have to subtract $75. And to start at 10,750 and get up to the top range of 10,825, we would have to add $75. So for this game, the margin of error is $75. We may deviate $75 either below or above our point estimate. So again, what is the margin of error? We just mentioned what that specific value was. And we said, again, if we were to start at 10,750 to get down to 10,675, we would have a $75 reduction versus going up, we would have a $75 addition to get to the 10,825. So again, the margin of error, how much we are deviating in this game is we have $75 on either side of our point estimate to be off by. Now the premise of the range game is hopefully we can capture that true price of the jet ski within this $150 interval. Now in statistics, that $150 interval is called a confidence interval. We are trying to trap, we're trying to contain the actual true population value. And in this case, the true actual value of the jet ski. Now, confidence intervals, and we're going to deal with this a lot throughout this chapter, and again in chapter 10 when we do the same thing for means, is we will have to interpret what the confidence interval represents. So that $10,675 all the way up to $10,825. And so we are going to state to interpret a confidence interval when we see those two numbers there, because we are often going to calculate, and again, I know this isn't a proportion problem, but these would be our kind of lower and upper range values. We think the true price of the jet ski is between these two values. Now, to interpret that, we will say we are a certain percent confident, and we'll get more into that, like, well, how much confidence do we have here? Um, you know, 100% confident, um, or, do, or do we need to go less than that? We'll talk specific. So this will be some specific number that we will discuss. So we are some percent confident. The true population value we are trying to capture is between kind of the lower number, the lower range value, and all the way up to the upper 
range value. And again, for our specific example, the lower range is the 10,675 and the upper range is the 10,825. So again, we just mentioned what that was. We don't know what percent confidence we're dealing with here, but again, we'll get to there later in the chapter. But we are some percent confidence that we are between 10,675 and $10,825. Now, how could you change the game to increase your confidence in winning? And if you think you only have a $150 range to work with here. And so some people might say, well, what if we increased the margin of error? What if instead of $150 from kind of least to greatest, or instead of a $75 margin of error, what if we just increase how big the margin of error is so that we're capturing more and more values? And that sounds like a great idea, right? And so this is what like the range game would, would look like. Instead of it just being a small red rectangle, basically we would just say, hey, what if that red rectangle was the entire range of values here? And as soon as the game starts, you hit the red button, and wherever the actual true value is, you're always going to win, right? That would be great for you. Not so great for the prices, right? It's not really a fair game in general. I mean, it's not even fair to you. Uh, you don't even have to guess. You just have to go hit the button and you win a new jet ski. So wouldn't we always want as wide of an interval as possible? And to be honest, 100% confidence really doesn't make very meaningful conclusions. So I really like this Garfield cartoon. And I don't know if you guys know who Garfield is, but he's a cat. He loves lasagnas, hates Mondays. Oh, Garfield. So anyway, he's watching the weather on TV and the always very accurate meteorologist says the high temperature will be between 40 below zero and 200 above. And Garfield says, this guy's never wrong. Well, yeah. I mean, basically you hit every temperature. So if we said we we're hundred percent confident that the temperature tomorrow is between negative 40 and 200 degrees, we're obviously going to be true because it's always been somewhere between negative 40 and 200 above. Now, some of you might be going, well, it might depend on where you are about negative 40 degrees. You know, if you're up in the tundra, like it could be colder than that. And that would be true. But in general, if we have a super wide interval, we're basically capturing every possible value. It's just not very helpful. So, you need to know that there is a trade-off between how confident you want to be and how wide the interval needs to be. So there's this delicate balance between you want to have a high enough confidence, but you don't want the confidence interval to be as wide as possible. Because again, you're going to be like in the Garfield situation. So again, our goal is to have high confidence, but not 100%. We don't want to include all possible values with as small of an interval as possible. And so we will discuss throughout this chapter, and again in chapter 10, kind of that delicate balance between a high enough level of confidence and achieving a confidence interval that's just not crazy, crazy wide. So a couple questions start to emerge typically in people's minds. What confidence levels are high enough to be helpful? You know, if 100% is just kind of stupid, then what confidence levels would be good? What confidence percentages? And so I'll tell you up front, usually we're going to be in the 90s. Um, a very common one, I'd say the golden standard would be 95% confidence. Um, and then what we'll notice a lot of times is if we were to ever read medical studies, typically they're 99% confident uh, in their values. And for good reason. In medical studies, you know, it may come down to life and death situations. Um, and so they really, really, really need to be highly confident, again, without getting to 100%, because then they're just selecting all possible values. So 99% is a common one. 95% is probably the general one that we'll use. And then occasionally we'll use maybe 90% but never really anything below 90 because then we're just not that confident and we're not really going to do a great job of probably capturing the true population value. Um, so 90, 95, 99, I would say the very common ones, but really the, the percentage for the confidence level could be anything between zero and 100%. 
Now, is there another way that we can reduce the width of a confidence interval besides decreasing our confidence? And yes, there is a way that we can do that. We can keep a high level of confidence, again, not 100%, but we can have a high level of confidence and shrink our confidence interval um, so that it doesn't include as many numbers. So I will share that information with you, not now, but later. Now, are confidence intervals always successful? And again, I would show you this little video clip of an instance of the range game. And I hope you can see here, let me make this a little bit larger. This contestant was not so lucky. She stopped her red rectangle $150 range just slightly above where the actual true value of whatever she was trying to guess the cost of. So she stopped it basically right at like 17000 probably like $95 if I had to guess. And she was like $2 off. So she did not win whatever the prize was in this scenario. Now, this is the one thing that really kind of boggles some people's minds. This is where we get away from the black and white of math and we get into more of the gray fuzziness of statistics. What we are going to be doing this chapter is calculating a range of values that we are going to hope captures the true population value. The thing is, though, we won't know if we have successfully captured the true population value because typically we don't know and don't have access to what that number truly is. We're just going to hope that we have taken a good random sample that doesn't have too much sampling variability to it and that we have successfully captured the true population value, whether it's a population proportion or later in chapter 10, a population mean. And so again, there's just this gray fuzzy area of maybe we've captured it. Maybe we haven't captured it. If someone took one random sample and made a confidence interval and a different person took a different random sample, are they going to end up with the same confidence interval? And typically they're not. They're going to have different values. And so again, that's kind of this murky area of how do we, how can we really trust a confidence interval? And we're just going to hope that um, the, the statistics and the math are going to support our calculation. So basically a confidence interval is our best mathematical guess at what the range of values are that would successfully capture the true population value. So I will end you with a you do problem. A special version of the range game is played to win a new refrigerator. What is the point estimate, the margin of error, and let's go with that golden standard general 95% confidence, how would you interpret the confidence interval itself? So again, here is the information you need over here. And I made this different. Uh, it's not just a $150 range like it was before for the actual Price is Right game. So you got to figure out three things. What is the point estimate? What is the margin of error? And once you have determined what that confidence interval is, how do you interpret what that val or what those values mean, that lower range and that upper range value? What does that mean in the context of this problem? And we will discuss this the next day in class.